Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Yeah. A 50 year old female uh, came to the ER with complaints of chest pain and uh, breathing difficulty since two days. Uh, on primary assessment, uh, airway was patent, there was no pooling of secretion, uh, breathing, respiratory rate was 32 per minute and uh, saturation was 95% in room air. Uh, circulation wise, BP was 110 by 80, pulse rate 110. 30 uh, per uh, 130 per minute uh, then uh, e gcs was e4 v5 m6 and temperature uh, a febrile grbs was 110 milligram per deciliter uh, patient also had um, um, sir, uh, raised uh, jvp uh, had raised jvp and patient uh, had fetal edema uh, so so first uh, initially since uh, there was raised jvp and patient was having chest pain uh, we took an ecg uh, the ECG showed a 139 uh, rate was 139 uh, per minute, and with along with low uh, voltage complexes were present. Uh, since uh, low voltage complexes were present, uh, so we uh, didn't uh, echo uh, bedside echo uh, for the patient. Uh, on doing the echocardiography, we saw that the patient was having uh, pleural uh, pericardial effusion. Uh, pericardial effusion is there. Uh, so then. ABG wise, uh, patient's pH was uh, 7.4, PCO2 28, uh, bicarbonate was 22, and uh, PO2 78. Uh, coming to sample history, uh, patient, uh, 50 year old female, is a known case of metastatic papillary carcinoma thyroid, status post total thyroidectomy with left neck dissection, and status post uh, radiotherapy uh, last done one year back. She is a known uh, hypothyroid and bronchial asthma patient. Uh, she presented to the ER with complaints of uh, chest pain which increased on inspiration, non-radiating uh, left-sided pain associated with breathing difficulty and orthopnea. Uh, there was no history of any palpitation, sweating, uh, cough or any radiation of pain, vomiting. Uh, since uh, uh, we suspected uh, uh, pericardial effusion, uh, there were uh, JVP was increased, uh, there was edema, uh, BP at that time was 110 by uh, 80, uh, we went mm. ahead with uh, mm. uh, cardio opinion uh, mm. in view of uh, whether pericardiosynthesis was needed for the patient. Mm. Okay, uh, so you said regarding low voltage complex, uh, so overall you will get low voltage complexes. What are the, tell me the condition where you will get low voltage complex and how will you say that okay this low voltage complex is significant and we need to think in terms of a pericardial effusion. You are seeing a lot of n number of low voltage complexes ECGs in the ER. So what are the common, no, one is pericardial effusion then. Okay, so okay, pneumothorax, okay fine. COPD. So, see, low voltage complex, when you are telling the term low voltage complex, I wanted certain clarity. Whether it was there only in the limb lead, whether it was only there in the chest lead. So, limb lead, where all you will get low voltage complex. Then, most common reason why you get low voltage complex in uh, limb leads, edema, pedal edema. That is the most common reason. The most common reason why you get a lot of patient with us. Uh, ascites, CLD patients who are coming with uh, pale edema, you might get a low voltage complex. Then what is the most common cause for a low voltage complex in chest leads? Thick chest, thick chest, obesity. Thick obesity, chest female patients, definitely female patients. And this lady was quite obese. Okay, this patient was obese and uh, definitely uh, that will be the one of the reason you might get a low voltage complex. So when you are getting a low voltage complex, our idea should be in mind whether it is a universal low voltage complex or whether there is a specific area you are getting a low voltage complex. That is the first thing that you need to look in for. The next thing to classically when we say pericardial effusion. So how will you know that? Okay, this is the ECG finding. You know electrical alternance. Mm. So that you will see only very less than 15, 20 or maybe less than 30 percentage of the population only. You will see the classical mm. pulses paradox, electrical alternance and all. That you will not be seeing in all the patients. Mm. So what criteria you can say that, okay, this can be a pericardial effusion by looking into the ECG. One is low voltage complex, I agree. Whenever you have a low voltage complex with tachycardia, whenever you see a low voltage complex with tachycardia, pericardial effusion should be your first differential diagnosis. 
that is the most important learning point at the end of the day. Whenever you are seeing all the leads, uh, low voltage complex and you are having a persistent tachycardia, like you had seen in this patient, you have to rule out a pericardial effusion. And next criteria, what you can look for an ECG criteria, you take lead 1, 2, 3. You calculate the voltage. If it is less than 15 millivolts, then again it is criteria is diagnostic of probably a pericardial. For you take the test leads, it should be V1, V2, V3, you tally together uh, the height of the uh, voltage complex. And if it's less than 30, again it is suggestive of uh, probable pericardial efficient. So that is a criteria. Just cannot say low voltage complex. So we have to be very specific when you are saying it's a low voltage complex. As you said, there are other reasons. Uh, low voltage complex you can get. Another can be a potassium disorder, hypokalemia. Hypokalemia, overall there can be a low, slow conduction and you might get a very rarely a low voltage complex. Mm -hmm. Pneumothorax, large pericardial effusion, sorry, large pleural effusion which is covering up the pericardium. Again also you might get a uh, low voltage complex. So we have to be very specific where the low voltage complex is. And looking at that you need to go ahead with the patient. This patient, actually this was referred thinking in terms of an pulmonary embolism and he came into this lady, uh, this chest pain was very subtle chest pain and on examination uh, she had bilateral V's actually initially, she had significant V's, bronchial asthma on top of that she had V's and uh, when you look into the classical features of muffled heart sound that you are able but in a busy ED uh, with a heart rate of 140 it is pretty difficult to appreciate a muffled heart sound, you might not be able to hear anything but she had a little bit of a muffled sort of a heart sound, but it was not very classical. And JVP elevation, again, uh, uh, JVP, uh, because I had seen the patient, it was not that greatly elevated and all. Uh, once we see vertical effusion, then we see something there in the neck vein, then we say it is an elevated JVP. So she was ever, never able to sit up and we cannot even properly assess her JVP. That was the situation when she came in. So uh, that is regarding the JVP elevation. What are the causes of elevated JVP? Okay. Then, when in the ED you are seeing a rampant bulged uh, jugular venous dilatation. So, yeah? Okay. SVC obstruction. That is the other thing that you need to think in terms of. So, that is SVC obstruction. Whether it is an SVC obstruction, we have to look in for. And pericardial effusion, you all can think. But uh, definitely, the diagnostic criteria may be what we can to look in is here. She had a background history of a metastatic thyroid disease. On top of that, she has come with a breathlessness and the chest was, wheeze was there, but literally there was not much of crepitations. The chest was otherwise okay, but the ECG was showing a low voltage complex. That guided us to look into whether she is having a pericardial effusion and what was the echo finding? Okay. It was a large That's pericardial effusion, it was a huge pericardial effusion mm -hmm. and even an X-ray. Oh, so, if you don't have an echo mission. So, you can go ahead with the x-ray. So, what view of x-ray you wanted to say that it is pericardial effusion? It is significant. You cannot say it is pericardial effusion. We can say it is a cardiomegaly is there or not. So, what view you want? PA view or an AP view? AP. Hmm? Always, so that is a classical teaching. Whenever you are going to comment uh, regarding a heart status, you have to go ahead and take a PA view. But in this lady, we hardly can't take a PA view. But we took an AP view. But what is the classical thing that you need to look in for? Look, actually, the 50 percentage of the heart should not be, uh, the, when you look at the chest area, the 50 percentage of the part, it should be less than 50 parts. It should be occupying by the heart. But in an AP view, it is difficult to diagnose. But the one most striking feature, what you can see, the sharp borders of the heart. Whenever you are seeing a sharp borders of the heart, that you can give it a clue, okay, are we dealing with a pericardial effusion? So that is the next thing. So now the question arises in our mind is that what to be done next for her? So uh, echo findings, echo finding you said there is a large collection. Now what are the key things that you need to look in, in the echo findings? When you see a patient with pericardial effusion, what are the key points that you should see and your decision of management should be depending upon that. You can have trivial pericardial effusion, you can have mild pericardial effusion, moderate pericardial effusion, severe pericardial effusion and finally worst scenario in tamponite. Tamponite there is no point in doing echo, you have to aspirate the whole fluid, you have to do pericardiosynthesis. But this lady her vitals was maintained. She was never in hypotension, but she might be going into tamponite at any point of time. So what are the key echo findings that you need to take in up and you see in an ED, okay, this lady should be immediately pushed for an pericardiosynthesis.
cancer uh, look at for uh, diastolic right ventricular collapse mm. there is the uh, systolic right atrial collapse okay uh, plethoric ivc with minimal uh, respiratory variation the most important thing what you need to look into how is the ri and rv okay. whether ri and rv is getting collapsed we can tell all those things echo findings when you are a cardiologist we can do but as an emergency physician our job is very simple how is the ri and rv if an rv or the whole effusion is constricting the ri and rv then that means she is going for an impending terminate at any point of time immediately that should be re decompressed so that is one thing that we can look in for and luckily this for, for this patient ri rv was not compressed and but there was a larger effusion which was in moderate to mild to moderate to severe amount of effusion and even we were unable to see the borders of the pericardium so that much was the initial view when we increase the decrease the depth only we could see the borders of the heart so that was the situation for this lady now uh, when in ed when will you suspect as i told this one so what are the other clinical features of pericardial effusion what are the other clinical features of pericardial effusion for that reason you should know what are the common causes of pericardial effusion can you enlist few common causes so malignancy most common is malignancy these days so that history majority of the time because we have seen n number of patient who has come with pericardial effusion malignancy is one of the key thing what are the reasons maybe the disease progression mm -hmm. is one of the common reason so malignancy then sir uh, all causes of pericarditis like viral pericarditis bacterial pericarditis tb tubercular pericarditis then then sir uh, metabolic it can be due to hypothyroidism okay. edema uremia then uh, connective tissue disorders SCD. connective tissue disorders very very important you have to because the patient who is on uh, sle treatment they will come have this polycirrhositis so when they have pericardial effusion there is a massive pericardial effusion then it is a very bad prognostic sign and uh, you need to immediately uh, maybe hike up the steroid dose whatever be it is so that is regarding the autoimmune disorders then sir uh, then uh, mi mi okay aortic dissection mm. and drugs certain drug, oral anticoagulants if she is taking uh, antiretroviral drugs uh, uh, chemo drugs chemotherapy can you tell me one drug doxorubicin 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 is a one but these days they are not using to that extent doxorubicin when they were using initially lot of patients will come with pulmonary edema and uh, uh, they can they had we had patients who had come with even with pericardial effusion cardiotoxic basically so what how will you evaluate such a patient coming to ed okay when will you suspect this patient is having probably a pericardial effusion what are the clinical features that suggest you okay i am am i dealing with a pericardial effusion so said regarding the ecg what are the other clinical features that you need to look in for sir uh, bp uh, sir there will be narrow pulse pressure narrow pulse pressure okay and then sir uh, there can be pulses paradoxes okay pulses. Uh, then uh, sir, raise JVP. Raise JVP. Then. 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 and but there is tachycardia and patient is breathless two things that we keep in our mind is one is pericardial effusion and another is pulmonary embolism so disproportionate breathlessness to what of your clinical findings are yeah. you have to consider are we dealing with a pericardial effusion or are we dealing with a pulmonary embolism so pulmonary embolism definitely comes a little bit on the higher top but when you have other features other risk factors suspicions always think that whether are we dealing with an uh, Pericardial. pericardial effusion so how will you differentiate between pulmonary embolism and uh, pericardial effusion ecg findings uh, uh, pulmonary embolism sir ecg uh, will have sinus tachycardia mostly mm. there will be features of right bundle branch block okay and uh, specific will be s1 q3 mm, that is not at all specific what is the name of that sign mcginn white sign so you will not get it in all patient and it is not pathognomonic of anything Uh, Most thing is right uh, persistent tachycardia, evidence of right ventricular branch block, right ventricular hypertrophy, mm -hmm. and maybe rarely you can see S one Q three T three. So that are the common findings that you need to look in for. But low voltage complex you will never see mm -hmm. when you are suspecting a pericardial effusion. Mm -hmm. So we have a tachycardia with a low voltage complex pericardial effusion. Keep in your mind. So that is the end point of what you need to know. And uh, such patient comes in. She suppose suddenly the same lady goes into a cardiac arrest in the ED. So, what will be your action plan? 
you know pericardial synthesis so action plan is what all the things you need to gather how will you do a pericardial synthesis that is the question uh, so pericardial synthesis there are three approaches that uh, can be done one what you will do in this patient arresting in er the same lady we have diagnosed and suddenly she had deteriorated and arrested for subsidified uh, pericardial synthesis mm. so what needle gauge, you will take 18 gauge spinal needle 18 gauge spinal needle okay mm. will, uh, then attach it to a syringe, uh, syringe containing mm. ns and then uh, from uh, some subsidified 1 cm uh, low we will push uh, um, push it and um, first give la uh, la if possible cardiac arrest scenario no la and all uh, and then we push it towards the uh, left shoulder mm. push it to the left shoulder at a 30 degree angle mm. and keep aspirating when we go mm. till we get uh, flow back okay so you can use the uh, help of echo also but in a cardiac scenario it's very very difficult somebody will be doing cpr and simultaneously mm. you are doing aspiration also mm. if you just aspirate 10 to 20 ml of fluid or blood itself the patient will usually return to roc mm. so that is a magic so we have done for this patient with pericardial effusion we just aspirate the patient will suddenly improve and then definitely the further aspiration you need to do in uh, drainage and uh, what or catheter you need to put and but in ed it is a very crucial step whenever you are suspecting this whenever you think there is a doubt in your mind don't hesitate in cardiac arrest go and aspirate it so aspiration maybe 5 10 ml is enough for the patient to improve so that is a key thing so pericardial synthesis and then you can send it for all tcdc later on and you can look for the cause of why the patient is having an pericardial effusion so most commonly this lady uh, what has been done for her sir uh, fungal stain um, fungal stain uh, everything was done fungal stain was so like most importantly what i want i want only one that's cytology uh, malignant cells uh, positive indicative of uh, malignant pericardial effusion uh, malignant pericardial effusion malignant secondary to the thyroid disease so uh, what was done for her any chemo rt uh, after the uh, after the tapping no sir just tapping and she was uh, started on tablet button okay <coughs> she was later on chemotherapeutic okay. agents okay so what was the progression for her uh, just uh, how much ml they aspirated 60 ml 60 ml they aspirated 60 660 ml okay so that huge mm-hmm. because initially when we put the echo we were hardly seeing the border mm-hmm. then we had to depth depth, depth increase the depth then we thought whether it's a pleural effusion and pericardial effusion together then when we came to know that there is nothing this just pericardial effusion only for this patient okay and she got discharged she got, she got discharged. discharged okay anything else that you want to add on there are uh, three uh, ways approaches for pericardial effusion uh, sorry pericardial synthesis synthesis, pericardial synthesis. the most common is subsidified that what we commonly practice Uh, there is subsidified, there is epical, and this parasternal. Okay. Uh, in epical, uh, there is this risk of uh, causing pneumothorax because of the left pleural space is also there. Other than that, uh, uh, subsidified is the one which we mostly do in emergency situations, um, and the parasternal there is risk uh, of injuring the internal memory uh, vessels. Vessels. Okay. Fine. So in a nutshell, at the end of the day, whenever you see a patient low voltage complex with tachycardia. think about pericardial effusion that is what the learning point you have to take it for today okay thank you